threat of disaster is never pleasant. Welcome to the Casual Preppers Podcast. These safety measures are essential. The only place for prepping, survival, and entertainment. This will be your source of survival instructions and information. Every member of the family must be coached in the business of survival. Here are your hosts, Cam and Kobe. Boy, don't get no more exciting than Boy. this. We're going to talk about books. <laughs> <laughs> it's, a, it's a funny joke, but it really yeah, like makes yeah. me excited. So, um, I just I like to picture in my head people just sitting around the radio listening <laughs> to our podcast, like as a family, <laughs> like from funny, like yeah. the fifties or like your forties or Dude, something. Dude, I don't know what it is about Ooh, kids. Here we go. Yeah. Casual preppers are on. They're on. They all just sit there books. like eating TV dinners. <laughs> yeah. I love that though, that whole thing like uh-huh. back in like the fifties. When they just gather around the radio yeah. and like that's cool. Especially on some of like those movies, and then you'd hear the radio come on and it's the it's the president, you know. Yeah. You give it in his address. I know. Oh yeah, I just love Way it. Way more exciting. Something Nowadays it. it's like you're watching a cartoon, it's like commercial yeah. badger seals, good for your whole family. <laughs> like you're yeah. like, what the badger seal. Hey Cam, what are we talking about today? Well, we're going to talk about books. <laughs> so sad. We're going to read some books. Yeah. We're going to talk about what books are good mm-hmm. for uh, your whole family and yeah. for prepping and for kind of give you the mindset of prepping, maybe yeah. trigger some prepping ideas. Yeah. We're going to talk about all that. Yeah, because book, books are great, man. Yeah. yeah. Books you, do it. You can read them. They're great. They're right there. <laughs> the pages. Once you read them, they're in the hair, yeah. you throw them away. Then you throw them. No, you keep them. I, yeah. Before we get to that, though, I got to tell you about Battle Box. It is the monthly subscription box full of solid gear for adventure seekers, survivalists, outdoor enthusiasts, and casual preppers. Each month, Battle Box sends you the coolest selection of hand picked outdoor survival and everyday carry gear, all valued at far more than what you normally pay. You never know what's in the next box, but here is a sampling of what users received this month the Pod Fusion Solar Power Bank. It is a cool looking one. Yeah, it is. And the Williamson Bird Dog Knife. No. Pretty dang cool. All this badassness starts at just $34.99 per month. They've shipped over a million boxes and one best men's subscription box of 2020. Our listeners get a free knife when you sign up at trybottlebox.com slash casual preppers. I like free knives. Cam likes free knives. You should like free knives too. And if you want one, go to yeah. trybottlebox.com slash casual preppers. And get one. Yeah. Oh, and guess what? What? Half of my prepper library is from Came Battle from Box. Battle Box. Yeah. Oh, Listener, so cool. so reviews cool. starts now. Son Lord Butler. Lord Butler. Like it's Sunday. <laughs> I know. I was just kidding. <laughs> Son Lord Butler. Um, entertaining and informative. Mm-hmm. Five star. New listener, as well as a fellow casual prepper. And it's nice to know I'm not the only one like you guys out there. I grew up not wanting to bring too too attention, mm-hmm. <laughs> too much attention to myself in case times got bad, and I've kept that attitude all through my adult life, even teaching my kids. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan of the gray man philosophy and knowing how to blend while still being prepared. Yeah, this is a great podcast for those who have either never uh, broached the subject of prepping and are finally ready to take action, or for those who are just wanting to scale down on their approach. Um, so as to not stick out like a sore thumb. Yeah. Great stuff, and I'm definitely on the same page with you guys. Thank you. Thanks, Son Lord nice. Butler. Son Lord Butler. <laughs> if you guys want to be part of this portion of the podcast, go to iTunes, go to Facebook, leave us a five-star review. Make it awesome. Make it it's awesome. a mad, mad world. Cam, you ever heard about this thing called AI? Oh, man. It's, it's creepiest cool. stuff in the world. It's super creepy. Here's the thing, though. Elon Musk and other experts sound the alarm on AI. AI warn oh, of really? potentially catastrophic scenario pleads for a pause. So this is interesting. The startling <laughs> pace at which artificial intelligence technologies are growing is sparking alarm, discontent, and concern among analysts with some of Silicon Valley's most prominent names rising up to call for a pause for such advances propagate severe societal damage. I believe it's it. kind of creepy. Uh, SpaceX founder Elon Musk has joined Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak and countless other prominent names to sign an open letter from the Future of Life Institute calling on AI companies to pause giant AI experiments and create safety protocols. AI systems with human competitive intelligence can pose profound risk to society and humanity, as shown by extensive research and acknowledged by top AI labs. Contemporary AI systems are now becoming human competitive at general tasks, and we must ask ourselves, should we let machines flood our information channels with propaganda and untruth? 
Should we automate away all the jobs, including the fulfilling ones? Should we develop non-human minds that might eventually outnumber, outsmart, obsolete, and replace us? Should we risk loss of control of our civilization? It's terrifying. Yeah. So anyways, I just thought that was really interesting that there's like really like prominent, prominent people. smart people. They're like, like, look, this is chat GPT is cool and all, but uh, we don't want to take over right. of AI. And there's like a lot of really smart people that are scared of this. Like I kind of always thought it was like, eh, like really. Me too. Yeah. You know, but there are some really smart people like, look, this is actually yeah. could be a problem. So yeah. anyways, I just thought it was an interesting thing. That it's they a were great topic. Signing. Actually, Whew. it'd be a great podcast. Yeah. I mean, one day we're going to do it. It's been on the list for a while. Yeah. We just it's haven't just, like. It's just, it's all over the place. And it's yeah. scary because the imitation online and like the. Yeah. Uh, I was watching them just scan a face like within like two or three minutes. Mm-hmm. They scanned this uh, lady's face in this uh, conference, yeah. and then they digitalized it, and like it was super close. You could still kind of tell us a little bit, yeah. but it's getting to a point where you can't tell. It's in like five they're years. Even, they're even producing, you know, those like deep fakes. Yeah, they're terrifying. Yeah, I mean, if you look at even like movies and stuff, how good they're getting. Like maybe this isn't even us. Mm. This is this is an app this on is Apple definitely. that's just producing <laughs> exactly like my flubbed words are just to make it sound normal. Yeah, so. like it's just Chat GPT. That yeah, it's so yeah. crazy, man. Well, so in schools too, that's a big problem. My brother says, like, when they do essay questions, mm-hmm. they're just generating them. Yeah, like they have tools to try and like find them out that they have. Yeah, they're, that they're using these, but kids aren't learning anything. No. So no. anyway, um, but guess what? Doesn't matter. Doesn't two thousand forty six? We'll probably like most of us might die. Oh, uh, really? Yeah, because there's an like asteroid. The coming. year after I retire, twenty forty six. I'm never retiring. I think mine's twenty forty five. I can't really? remember. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, my projections until the day I die. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so mm. a newly detected asteroid has a very small chance of impacting the Earth, but I think we should just fully take it as a serious It's happening. Threat. Yeah, it's coming. NASA tweeted on Tuesday, if it does hit the asteroid roughly the size of an Olympic swimming pool, doesn't seem too big. No. May arrive on Valentine's Day. Perfect. 2046. There's some chocolates and an asteroid. So don't even bother getting presents for your significant other. I took it off my calendar. Guess what? We're dying. Yeah. So <laughs> what are we going to do? Yeah. You know. Let's do it hurry before <laughs> yeah. the asteroid gets here. It's 6 a.m. We don't know when it's showing up. <laughs> the closest the asteroid is expected to get to Earth is about 1.1 million miles. Oh, sh- almost got me. I felt it go by. My hair my blew hair in there. My hair parted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> One point one million. It's so funny. I know. It's so like it's gonna hit. Well, probably within a couple million miles. It doesn't even come in our solar system. <laughs> I know. It's like what the asteroid dubbed twenty twenty three DW has about a one in five hundred and sixty chance of hitting Earth. So Corey somebody's does. math is crazy. If they're <laughs> if it's one point one million miles away, but there's like one in five hundred and sixty. Yeah, this is NASA. <laughs> These are our smartest and brightest <laughs> working on well rockets. done. Yeah, isn't that funny? Like, yeah, but I like so. Did somewhere. we talk about this before? The scale, which goes from zero to ten, <clears throat> measures the risk of space objects colliding with Earth. I think we may have all other objects on the scale rank zero, indicating oh. no risk. A ranking of one means that an actual collision is extremely unlikely and no cause for public concern. So why do they even talk about it? I don't know. Good hit. I don't know. It's only a level one. Probably. Out of 10. Yeah. This object is not particularly concerning. JPL mm. and navigation engineer David Farnocchia. Farnocchia. Yeah. Mm, interesting. Yeah. That's so anyways, I, it's like, it's funny. I've, I've seen it. a couple of things pop up about the asteroid yeah. getting... 2046 we so. really need a good asteroid like it's time for for one that scares everybody you know That's what i true. mean like that that yeah that turned out some movies back in the day yeah it's like when was the last time we had a good one where people were when scared did, when did uh armageddon and stuff come out i think well, that was were, mid 90s because there was a comment and stuff wasn't there wasn't that why they were like, was haley's something come up that yeah, it was brought haley's. all those movies out was it wasn't it i think because it was. wasn't the um that uh, cult group <laughs> weren't, yeah. weren't they? Wasn't well? Didn't they say that there was a spaceship on the back of Haley's That's comet right. that was going to get him? Nib- Nibiru Heaven's and Gate. all that stuff. Heaven's like, Gate. Yeah. Yeah. So. Anyways. Anyways, watch out for that. Yeah. Be careful. Twenty forty six. Put that on the calendar. Yeah. Let's talk about books. Yeah. Cam. Um. I love books. If you guys have listened for very long, you know that like I love to read. I love to collect books. Books are awesome. And as a prepper. Books are even more awesomer. You can tell I'm getting a good vocabulary from all this reading. Um, it's the, noticeable. Yeah. So let's People talk about like why. Like why uh, Why should you as a prepper think about books? There's so many weird things, but I wanted to start it off with this because 
we're listening to this podcast. Well, we're not listening. We're we're doing the podcast, but you're <laughs> listening. Hold on. Yeah. I haven't received what I'm what supposed are you to say. Now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um you're listening because you want to survive. Like you want a higher chance of survival. And I found this thing and it's gonna make you want to read, Cameron. Um a health and retirement study some years ago showed that compared to non-book readers, book readers had a four-month survival advantage at the point of 80% survival over the 12-year period of the study. Book readers also experienced a 20% reduction in risk of mortality over the 12 years of follow-up <clears throat> compared to non-book readers. Hmm. So, yeah. since we're talking about books, you want to live longer. Was that LeVar Burton? Read books, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, sponsored reading by Rainbow. Reading Rainbow. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, no, it's interesting I just, though. It's kind I, of interesting. Uh, like, yeah, staving off some dimension stuff has been yeah. shown. So makes sense for sure. Yeah. So let's talk about what is the benefit of a pr having a prepper library. Um, and we're going to talk about all the different paper kinds burns, of, doesn't it? Sure does. You wipe your butt with it. <laughs> wipe your butt with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So there's here's the thing to me. Like there are so many aspects to prepping. Uh, there's just like a million, and there's so little time. Yeah. There's only so much time it for it. It goes without saying. <laughs> it goes without saying. <laughs> it, prepping requires forethought, right? <laughs> yeah, um, so because of this, it's really hard to know everything that you need to survive in every situation. And when I say it's really hard, I mean it's impossible. I'm not saying like there's somebody out there who can survive every situation. Exactly. There isn't. No. Les Stroud ain't gonna, mm -mm. you know, that British. Best chance. The but British probably not drinks gonna be. piss. He ain't gonna either. Yeah. But because so building a library of reference books can be a great way to kind of just like up your survival game, right? In a long, if a long term scenario hits that's you know an SHTF, you're gonna have a really good peace of mind knowing that at least you can pick up the book and find that information on your shelves. Yeah, I can't tell you how how every time I get one of those books like in Battle Box or something, I'm like fantastic, I'm gonna put it on my shelf. No, not only does it look <clears throat> good, yeah, but it's, it's always there, it's, it's like, always there, you don't have. To plug it in, you don't have to yeah. charge it to. That's what exactly. There's just something about opening a book too, and also it's and it's just like you know we got like the Prepper's Water Survival Guide. I think it's a great book. I haven't really gone through and like read the whole thing. No, but there's little things. There's so many little teeny details. It's so hard to remember. And that's the whole thing. Somebody's like, "Well, how many uh, drops of you know this do I put in to keep my?" I'm like. I, I don't know. A copy. Go read, read it. it. <laughs> read it. Find it. Like I don't need to yeah. remember that. Yeah, it's really easy to find. So that's why. That's why I kind of like that stuff. You can. You, you're going to be able to get like real world, uh, expert advice in the field whenever you need it because mm -hmm. you can carry these books with you if you need to. <clears throat> you know, there's no power. If there's no access to the internet, you can still get by because that's like if we don't know how to do something today, we literally always bring up Google. Uh, Google, how do I do this? It's true. You or you bring up uh, YouTube. Mm -hmm. Right. If you don't know how to do something, what are you going to do if that resource isn't available? You got to have some other resource. Do you remember how we always used to have like the encyclopedias, like yep. the big like? Um, My parents would buy the whole oh, series. Like yeah. they, they still mm -hmm. have some of them that I yeah. like from the eighties. I'm like, I want these. I remember doing you know like projects. Like in, I did a science project on the moon directly from one. You of were those. on the moon. I was on the moon. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to stay down. It was crazy it was floating while we were out there, but yeah, I went to a nice high but school. But yeah, you like all <laughs> you, you did. Yeah, 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 yeah. But you know what I mean. Um, no, you got to have some sort of resource for information if that if that isn't available. Um, fiction. It's also a really great way to up your prepping game, Cam. Some think fiction is a waste of time. Yeah, they'd be wrong. Yeah. 100% wrong, and I don't care how much you argue with me. You learn an immense amount of information from fiction. Um, and, and with prepper fiction or survival fiction, you can gain like really important knowledge while you're being entertained at the same time. A lot of times, um, it can be dramatized or you know maybe it's not perfectly correct, but you can parse those things out, and, and it gives you a chance to look at different situations that you may have never even thought of. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and we've talked about this a lot, even with like. How could you say you don't like fiction books? Like, it's not the <clears> first <throat> book I pick up, but. Yeah. It's like saying you don't like movies. Yeah. That's the whole thing. Like, they're, they're movies. It's like. <laughs> that's the whole thing, right? Yeah. You're, you're, they're stories. If you don't like fiction movie, books, then you don't like fiction in general. And it yeah. just doesn't make sense why you wouldn't. Yes. Fiction kind of gives you that kick in the butt to keep going or even start prepping with, you know, inspiration and interest. It really gets started with like this good fiction. I can't tell you how many people have come to me and said, oh yeah, or, or messaged us. I, I just read one second after and man, yeah, it made me one. think like, 
for sure. How many like that's fiction, right? And so it's the only it, way you could paint a scenario, yeah, to like make you really think about. It's hard to what, get. What would you need? What what yeah. could you? Nobody no was talking ex- about EMPs a lot of, before yeah, you, you, that. Hardly. No one's experienced something like yeah. that. So you have to just assume mm-hmm. what it would be like. Yeah. And plus, man, they're entertaining. Yeah. Like you, there's going to be times in different emergency or SHTF scenarios where you need to be entertained and books are a great way to do that. Right. So think about that. So let's talk about this age old battle, digital versus physical when it comes to your prepper library. This is such a tough one, man. It is a tough um, one. Because there really are pros and cons to each of those. So let's look at the eBooks, the digital side of it first. What are the pros there? You can have a tiny little device like this and store thousands of books on it. Pretty amazing. Literally thousands of books. It's fantastic. And, which which is another thing that's really cool, is you can buy a book instantly. You want it, you click on the thing, it downloads instantly and you have it. You can't do that with, um, a physical book. You mm-hmm. have to go to the store, you have to order it online and it comes later, right? Um, ebooks are that usually- That is a nice thing. <clears throat> yeah, it's it's like I really nice. want to read it and I'm in, like, I have time tonight. Yeah. Boom, you got your book. You got it. You can do it. That's fantastic. Um, the books are usually a little bit cheaper in, in that form because they obviously don't have to pay for the paper. Um, you can make and send notes electronically, which are kind of cool. You can read the same book on multiple devices. Yeah. Which is pretty sweet sometimes. And sometimes you get free downloads on books, which is True. cool. Right. So that's a lot of um, pros for those ebooks. And let's talk about physical books. Um, I'm a physical book guy. I like the physical book mostly because I like the feel of it. I like, re- I feel like I read yeah, better. I cover feel. Yeah. I mean, I rub it over against my face. <laughs> Uh, papers. Now. Add a paper cup is good. Mm. This is real. Slash me all the way down. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I just, I like the feel of it. I feel like I read better. I like to lick my fingers anyway. Yeah. So, I just, as long, if I can do anything that helps me lick my reason, fingers. There's a bigger reason. Yeah. <laughs> um, a hard copy of a book can't get deleted. You can't hit delete no. accidentally, right? Um, you don't need electricity to read it. Yeah, that's, you know, that's probably the biggest <clears throat> downfall yeah. to books is like, yeah. If you're reading in bed or something or like, yep. you're like, gosh, dang it, I can't. Yeah. This eyeball ain't working, but yeah. Yeah. Um, th- again, I the, do much prefer the physical book. Yeah. But there's those conveniences I know. that are hard to like. Again, like the feel of the hard book in your hands, it's, uh, I don't know, a hard, hard, Death hard book <laughs> in my hands. A hard book ain't nothing but in my hands. <laughs> it's so, just on this, not this hard comment that yeah. you're just making. Yeah. Um, but just the, like, I feel like, your mind does different things. It does. Like, I think you're more distracted with ebooks. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't know what it is. Even if I'm reading on like a Kindle, yeah. I'm still, I'm less, mm-hmm. I don't know, I'm less engaged in the book. 100%. I don't know why. I, I agree. And that's, well, I'm going to talk I, about that in a easier second. Easier on your eyes, smells good. Yep. Mm. Got that paper cut stinging. And they've done studies and the studies Have say they? that. It makes total sense. You, It is better with a physical book. But anyways, <clears throat> um, so, uh, yeah, physical book, uh, readers of print books absorb and remember more of the plot than readers of eBooks do, according to a study that was presented in Italy in 2014. Just what you're saying. Nice. Like you absorb more of it. I believe that. <clears throat> which is kind of crazy. Um, it's so does this study. Yeah. Usually much easier on the eyes. Yeah. I mean, they have like the new Kindle, uh, paper, what do they call them? They're, they're, they look just paper like paper, light or something like paper white or something like that. But most of them, like if you're trying to read on an iPad or a phone, like it's not easy on your eyes. No. It's not good on your eyes. And less distractions with a physical book. You can't switch over to the internet and right. start, right. you know, looking at Facebook, even though it's a book. <laughs> right? <laughs> literally. Yeah, literally. This is exactly what it's made for. <laughs> yeah. Um, ebook. What are the cons? What are the downsides? You have to have power. You have to have batteries. If it's dead, you can't read anything, yeah. right? That that kind of sucks. It can get deleted or hard drives can get corrupted. Um, and it's harder on the eyes. Depending Interruptions on the half the time. Interruptions, yep, exactly. Physical book, what are the cons there? That stuff takes up so much space. Yeah, it true. is hard. And I am a book collector and a book seller. And it's one of the things that I fight all the time. Like, I don't have <laughs> enough space. Huh? You put paper yeah, I did. They can get ripped or they can get ruined. They're heavy. Um, yeah. paper cuts, they suck. Yeah. Um, they could possibly deteriorate over time. And I see that a lot because I collect vintage like paperbacks and stuff and you get some that just start to fall apart. Yeah. Uh, if they, if they weren't taken care of. So anyways, yeah. that's, that's books. Good. Yeah. That's, that's you why you uh, one thing on the pros and I, and I think about this too, is like <clears throat> that paper can be used for yeah. fire or it's whatever, true. like in a real emergency. In a bad like, situation. I don't have a fire starter or something. You got a book there. Yep, exactly. So, I, I just should have put that in there, but you're right. Yep. Um, 
because that's all I want to do. Yeah. I want to try reading the books instead of <laughs> burning, burning them. them. Yeah, exactly. So, um, yeah, good. Uh, medical books. Let's. Yeah, we're gonna start to talk about different uh, categories yeah. of books and what's good for preppers. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll give you some recommendations. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, so medical books. There, I mean, there's billions out there. Oh my gosh. And it's yeah. overwhelming. Like even in school, I'm like, like which ones to get? And the school usually gives you some recommendations, but it's like it's kind of like over time of what I'm like referencing and going back to, I tend to go back to the same ones. Right. Like I've kind of figured out what fits best in like, you know, quicker, like, um, like quick pace, urgent care type scenarios, yeah. stuff like that. Um, and we've talked about it a lot of times that I, I just remember that guy that you was like, well, I carry that book around and you can read it and then store it in your brain or whatever yeah, he yeah. said. Um, you can't. And like, as much as you think, uh, a doctor, remembers and knows all this stuff we we constantly go back mm-hmm. um all that was the thing that was probably the most shocking to me i was like i felt like it was like wizard of oz I'm like, i had no idea yeah they were going back into their room and looking, looking at books the, yeah and it's always like they're they're just referring back to different details and numbers mm-hmm. of labs and stuff and so it happens all the time so um i do use my phone a lot but i always think about that i'm like it, when there's a time you have to dose a medication or something like that mm-hmm. i'm going to need a book and I'm, my phone isn't always going to be yeah. the best thing to access. So over time, um, I've found certain books that I, I feel are very useful in terms of, uh, medical, maybe ones, you know, that urgent care isn't going to always be there. No, heck you, no. you're not going to wake up little Timmy's going to have a sore throat. Mm. You're not going to be able to go to urgent care. Either it's going to be, um, if I were a provider and there was, a, I'm going to take care of my family instead of go to work yeah, sure. and check little yeah. Timmy's throat. Yeah, I ain't good. It's just, no. you never know. And um, the other thing is, if it's a true pandemic, you're not going to want to go down there anyway. No. It's going to be overwhelmed yeah. or uh, it's just going to be a nightmare. So you need to learn to do things on your own medically and you need to be able to read when you need to seek better or, you know, more medical uh expertise. And what so. I love about medical books for me is like, I just, I don't have the time to do the training. Like I really want to. Why would you? Like I want to I do, wouldn't want to. I want to do first aid training. I want to know this stuff, but I feel like I got so much other stuff going you on. You really do. Yeah. So. I can't do it. So if I have a couple of medical books at home, I'm like, look, last resort. Yeah. I can take five minutes and look it up as long as somebody's not dying on the table. Right? Exactly. Most medical things can be managed on your own. Yeah. You just sometimes need a reference. Yeah. So, and it, it, yeah, it's like a lot of those skills. I'm like, some mm-hmm. of them I'm way interested in and I, I kind of do little bits here and there. Other ones I'm like, I love that idea, but I'm, I, I just no. don't know when I'm ever going to get to learning how to do it. Exactly. So, um, the, uh, Prepper's Medical Handbook, I got to put that in there. Yeah. Not because, you know, they are a sponsor, but, um, mm-hmm. this book is really simple, um, to the point, uh, mm-hmm. type of book. Like it'll, it'll address most of the things you need, um, when you can't access a medical center or something like that. It's got all the basics on making your own bug out bag, uh, med kit, your fac, your, uh, it's got, um, different medications, different, uh, home remedies. It's, it's a great, easy to read and available book. Like yeah, we highly recommend it. So that's what I like that. It's a, a doctor who wrote it. Exactly. And a prepper. Yeah. So it's both. So he's kind right? of, he's interested in, yeah. and he knows what he, you know, he's seen it all. Mm-hmm. And so he kind of no understands what will probably be needed in, in an emergency. So, yep. um, the other book that I have used from the beginning of practice was it's, uh, Finninger and Fowler's procedures for primary care. Mm. It's a big book and it's expensive, but in that book, it has everything like, um, it has like really in-depth surgical procedures, like, you know, inserting a chest tube, stuff like that, mm-hmm. that you probably will never do, but it has simple stuff like how to fix, uh, or what to do for an ingrown toenail, mm-hmm. both surgically and preventative. And it has, uh, how to, how to suture and what suture types to use or look for. Like yeah. it has all that stuff in there. It's, it's the best like medical procedure book that you can get. So that'd be a great one just to have on the show. So if you're just like, okay. if I have to do any of these little procedures and I don't have any training, this is a good one to have or know where it's available. Or even if you do have training, I'm sure you feel better. Oh, I use it all like the time. Like having that at that your it, house. Yeah. Do you know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. If stuff went down, I have, be it, like, I have I've mm-hmm. had it in clinic forever because yeah. I go back to it all the time. Um, that's a great nice. book. And I mean, it's, it's probably 160 or 180, but, yeah. um, 
I think you can get a digital form or something like that too, if you're interested. But hmm. if you're looking for one to to know how to do some of the procedures that uh, you may expect to have with your yeah. kids or something like that, this is a great book. Hmm. Um, as for like medications, there's a lot of different options there. I do like the Davis Drug Guide because um, the book kind of breaks medications down, their proper dosages, mm-hmm. um, titration, and and uh, and all that stuff is in there. And I mean, it's probably the most in depth uh, pharmaceutical book that you could like get mm-hmm. and understand. You yeah, know? there's ones that just go over the top. It's like, what is going on? And so you never know um, if you have certain medications and you want some. Uh, and, and you run out and in a like crappy scenario where you're having to find something to replace what you have to take. Yeah. This book is going to be great for you. Um, the Tarascon like pharmacopoeia and they have mm-hmm. family medicine, they have urgent care, they have emergency med- medicine, the series, uh, they're a nice little pocket book that you could throw in a bag mm-hmm. and it goes over all those things. I like the pharmacopoeia one cause it talks about what the medication is for, like super to the point. It's like, mm-hmm. um, metoprolol. Uh, can be used for this, this, this. How you dose it? Uh, done. What? Oh, maybe nice. some alternatives. So it's like it's not like finding a recipe online and you have to. No, it's not like read the half life of this medication and it actually excretes through the liver thirty percent. Like yeah. stuff have you, you don't really need. Tried to, to find a recipe online and you have to read like fifty uh-huh. paragraphs of their backstory before <laughs> yeah. you get to the recipe I tried for a milkshake. The sugar and then I backed it off. And no, it's like yeah. my grandpa. Blah blah blah. Back in nineteen thirty. Yeah, you're like I don't care. Just give me the numbers. Uh, how two long cups. Did I cook it for. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is ridiculous. exactly right. Um, other medical books to consider. Um, a lot of the like uh, uh, off the grid medicine and things mm-hmm. that I that I have looked at as well are from like the Survival Doctor's Complete Handbook. Mm-hmm. Um, James Hubbard, he's uh, I think he's a retired physician, but he he's done a lot of survival medicine. He has like some of those quick little tips on rashes and things like that, and how to assess James them Hubbard. Oh. His mom had a cupboard. <laughs> Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and if you're more digital and you have a backup plan, Faraday mm-hmm. cage, and you're expecting to have a device through the apocalypse, mm-hmm. Hippocrates is hugely used. Hippocrates. Hippocrates. Yeah. And then the Merck manual mm. is, um, was a subscription that you used to have to have, but now it's, um, now it's free to all. Oh, cool. So instead of using WebMD, not that WebMD is horrible, but everything leads to cancer, I swear. Yeah. Everybody comes in there like, this tonsil stone I heard is cancer that is going to go in my eyeball and mm-hmm. I'm going to die. And I said, yes. <laughs> Sorry. We Good can't job, do much more. WebMD. <laughs> go get yourself prepared for medical. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Yeah. Um, nice. But the, Mer- the Merck manual is kind of one where you basically can kind of work through a problem of like okay well let's look at these symptoms yeah. and it's it's a little bit more uh clean and cut like it's it's a clean cut one clean cut i like that. no anyways those cool. are some medical options that i use regularly and i think they're good reference guides um something to kind of build a library of mm-hmm. not having a world with an urgent care yeah Whew. it's gonna be tough on people it is not gonna be easy so. nice that's good the next section we want to talk about are nonfiction prepper books. So this one isn't like skills. Cam's going to do some books about like different prepper skills, but this is just like good, interesting information that preppers might find um, valuable or entertaining or whatever that might be. So I'm going to start with a few that I've read. Um, I've talked about this one several times, but Raven Rock, uh, the story of the U.S. government's secret plan to save itself why the rest of us die. That's one I really wanted to Yeah. Read. Garrett M. Graff wrote this. I gave it four and a half stars. This thing was fantastic. Let me read you a quick sort of like overview synopsis. For 60 years, the U.S. government has been developing secret doomsday plans to protect itself, and the multi-billion dollar continuity of government program takes numerous forms from its plans to evacuate the Liberty Bell from Philadelphia to plans to launch nuclear missiles from a Boeing 747 jet flying high over Nebraska. In Raven Rock, uh, he sheds light on the inner workings of the 650-acre compound called Raven Rock, just miles from Camp David, as well as other uh, dozens of other bunkers the government built uh, its top leaders during the Cold War, from the White House lawn to Cheyenne Mountain. So anyways, it just has a ton of interesting information about continuity of government, which is fascinating to me. I don't know why I like it so much, but I really do. We did an episode on continuity of government 
couple we years did. ago, and I, I thought it was so much fun. Somebody had sent us some patches too. Yeah, about they did. The, yeah. Uh huh. So uh, this book is great. Sections can get a little long and a little dry, but push through those because there's tons of good stuff. This is one I would love to go back to again and and read or listen to it. Maybe you know. So, mm-hmm. anyways, Raven Rock, really interesting. Give it four and a half stars. Fantastic. Um, another one I read was called Bunker Building for the End Times. This is by Bradley L. Garrett. I gave it four and a half stars. This thing was awesome too. Um, your bunker. Y- yeah, <laughs> it's how to build a bunker. No, has doesn't talk about yeah I know. Uh, in bunker acclaimed urban explorer and cultural geographer bradley garrett explores the global and rapidly growing movement of prepping for social and environmental collapse or doomsday from the dread merchants hustling safe spaces in the american midwest to eco fortresses in thailand from geoscrapers to armed mobile bunkers bunker is a brilliant original and never less than deeply disturbing story from the front lines of the way we live now and illuminating reflection on our age of disquiet and dread that brings it into new sharp focus. So anyways, he talks about preppers, but he does it in a way that um, he doesn't like disparage preppers, which I thought was great, right? It's kind of like a fair look at prepping around the world. This guy was on Rogan a couple years ago, maybe too. Really? Yeah, he's an interesting dude. He does like urban exploring, so like he breaks into like... Me too. Yeah, <laughs> do you? Yeah. How do you do it? Let's go to stores. Let's go to stuff stores. Like that. Yeah, that's interesting. All right, the next one is called Lights Out. <laughs> Uh, cyber attack a nation unprepared surviving the aftermath by ted koppel um i gave this one three and a half stars basically he reveals that a major cyber attack on america's power grid is not only possible but likely that it would be devastating if the united states is shockingly unprepared obviously this is obviously if you if you're really interested in grid down scenarios and stuff he talks a lot about i just remember it being okay um wasn't amazing yeah um Notes from an Apocalypse, A Personal Journey to the End of the World and Back. This is by Mark O'Connell. I gave it four stars. This one was weird. It it was interesting. Um, In Notes from an Apocalypse, Mark O'Connell crosses the globe in pursuit of answers. He tours survival bunkers in South Dakota. He ventures to New Zealand, a favored retreat of billionaires banking on civilization's collapse. I know. He engages with would-be Mars colonists, preppers, right-wing conspiracists. Um, He bears witness to those places like Chernobyl. He goes to Chernobyl. Um, Anyways, really interesting. He kind of just talks. He he investigates the apocalypse and people are totally into it. Um, Just beware there is a bit of like a left-leaning slant throughout Mm -hmm. this whole book. So if you can't handle it, if you can't handle it, (laughs) then don't read it. I can handle it though. So um, it was kind of interesting. Four stars. Um, the Disaster Diaries. This one was actually really interesting. How he Anne Hathaway. Yeah. <laughs> the, this is a sequel to The Princess Diaries. <laughs> yeah. How I Learned to Stop Worrying and Love the Apocalypse. This was by Sam Sheridan. I give four stars. Uh, so Sam Sheridan, um, he has worked as an EMT, a mixed martial artist, wilderness firefighter, a sailor, a cowboy, a construction. Uh, anyways, he, at the South Pole. He's done a ton of crazy things. Um, if he isn't ready for the apocalypse and the fractured world that will likely ensue, we are all in a lot of trouble. So it kind of talks about like this dude's done it all. Yeah. And if he's not ready for the apocalypse, um, who is (laughs) right? So it's kind of interesting. Um, despite an arsenal of skills that puts many to shame when Sam became a father, he was beset with nightmares about being unable to protect his son with disaster. That is where it kicks in from movies, books. Yeah. So anyways, he's like, I don't know what to do if it comes. Like he was scared once he had a kid, which is exactly what happens when you have a kid. You start to, that's where a lot of people start to become preppers. Because, you know. So anyways, I read this years ago. It's not super fresh in my mind, but I do remember it was pretty good. So I thought that was a fun one to look at. Um, The next one, The Hot Zone, the terrifying true story of the origins of the Ebola virus. This is by Richard Preston. I gave it four stars. So this is is obviously about um, the Ebola virus how it started and how it almost got loose right when it first came uh, to to the United States. I read this right around the time of the Ebola scares a few years ago, if you remember that, Cameron. Um, and so I was an idiot. I shouldn't have done that because it was creepy and scary. Yeah. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, the hot zone is is a good read. Um, the last one I wanted to talk about on this section that I've read is Survival Theory from Jonathan Hollerman. We all know about him, but this dude is, he's a former SEER instructor. He's done kind of like everything. And if you're looking, uh, if you're someone like looking for a long-term scenario book, like how to survive long-term in a grid down scenario, this one 
is your book and it's super serious um this dude goes all in and if you're looking for that survival theory is great uh, i don't know you haven't have you read that cam no i haven't you haven't read it okay is that the one i recommended to my brother yeah I, it is i don't know yeah Not sure a couple of them that i haven't read um these two are kind of interesting they're basically like how-to guides for long-term shdf scenarios i do own this first one it's called how to invent everything a survival (laughs) guide for the standard time traveler so basically uh, the premise is funny so what would you do if a time machine hurled you thousands of years into the past and then broke oh yeah that's good so that's kind of the what it is and so as it um goes along it kind of talks about yeah you're done you're you're here how are you going to survive are you going to be able to improve on humanity's original timeline? And how hard would it be to domesticate a giant wombat? Like all these different weird things. <laughs> so like it just goes through the basics of engineering and science and philosophy and facts and like how would you restart civilization? That was, was pretty sweet. Yeah. Another one that's really similar to that is called The Knowledge, How to Rebuild Our World from Scratch by Lewis Darnthal. Dart, Dartnell. So anyways, same, same kind of uh, premise. Who wants to rebuild a world, huh? I don't know. Let it be. Yeah. So that's the uh, nonfiction prepper books. Nice. Yeah, some really interesting stuff. Yeah. There. Speaking of preparing, mm-hmm. you got to watch out for that cyber crime. Mm-hmm. It's going to get you. It's going to get you. Could. Use your phone all the time, right? Mm-hmm. iPad, computer. It's out there. And um, they're working hard to, to bust your... Uh, <laughs> Bust into your bank, I should say. Okay. Um, I was going to say something else, but... Yeah, I can sense. see that. But... um. There's a way to protect yourself, and it's super easy to use. It's even built into You can get the extension on Google. Just put it right in the browser or download the app. It is called Surfshark, and it is a virtual private network that can protect you and all your devices. Not just one device or five devices. It will protect everything that goes online practically. Um, it, it allows you to go online, gray man. It's taking your IP, putting it in a whole other country even, and you can just uh, not worry about um, somebody phishing or sending malware or um, accidentally clicking on a link that takes you to an obnoxious or unsafe site because um, you're protected. Also, you can get notified if your email password is leaked. Pretty awesome. Um, again, like I said, one subscription will cover all your devices. It's not limited. You can also use it for entertainment. You can access like Netflix in the UK or France. I don't know if they have that, but you can watch some videos there because you're using the IP address in that country. So it's pretty cool. Um, you can get 27 months for less than 60 bucks. You can't beat it. Like It's awesome and easy to use. I have it on my phone. I use it when I travel. If I'm using a public Wi-Fi, I always turn it on. And it's pretty quick, too. It doesn't seem to slow things down. So you can go get yours at uh, surfshark. I think, uh, is that the email? <laughs> what? I can't remember what the email is. Is it surfshark.com? I think so. Is Anyways, put in our code. Deals? That's what it is. Yeah. Uh, casual Preppers, uh, put our code in there. Mm-hmm. Sometimes they'll throw their own code in. Delete that out. Yes. Put our code put in our there. Put our code in there, please. And you will get 83% off. That's less than 60. It's like fifty nine seventy six for mm. 27 months. Yeah. There's a lot that happens mm-hmm. in 27 months. Cybercrime is probably one of them. So yeah, if you don't know yourself. that, there is a link in the show notes. Oh, good. Just go click it. Yeah. And you'll get you there. Yep. I've I've paid with my own money mm-hmm. for four years now. Yeah. So it's it's useful and it works well and I feel super, super safe at night. Uh, knowing that that's turned <laughs> exactly, on. Exactly, yeah. So, mm-hmm. um, so there's a lot of skills to learn. Yeah. Um, for preppers, we always talk about building more skills, shooting skills, bushcraft skills, and all that. So Mm -hmm. I just wanted to go over a few guides and a few books that I've used and looked at and I've actually found to be like easy to read and useful. Mm -hmm. Um, Starting with bushcraft, if anybody has not looked at Bushcraft 101, yeah. It's it, it's an awesome, like, super interesting. You feel manly reading it. Yeah. Like, it's just an awesome book to kind of brush up on wilderness survival skills. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's written by survivalist expert Dave Canterbury. Mm-hmm. Um, it gets you ready for backcountry. And it's based on the five C's of survivability. Cutting tools, Kobe, covering. Cameron, <laughs> casual. Exactly. Actually, the seven C's <laughs> the of seven survivability. C's, yeah. Kobe, Cameron, cutting tools, yeah. covering, combustion devices, containers, and cordage. Oh. That sounds like it just wraps it all up. Yeah. Ties it in a little bundle. Uh, yeah. But 
It helps you to you know choose the right items for your kit, manufa- manufacturing tools and supplies, mm-hmm. collecting and cooking food, which is a huge deal, yeah. protecting yourself from the elements. It's an awesome little book. You can get even like the pocket size one and throw in a yeah. bug out bag. Um, this one I have really I have popular. it on. I think I I have it on Kindle too. I, like I look at it all the time about building just stuff in the house. I'm like, let's take all this stuff, and yeah. it's pretty cool. Um, it's an awesome book. He actually has several different books in that series. Um, there's Bushcraft 101. Then there's Advanced Bushcraft. There's mm-hmm. Bushcraft Field Guide to Trapping, Gathering, and Cooking. You can get them all in a little bundle too. But that's cool. This is an awesome one to look at. Um. Yeah, that one's really popular. Yeah. Really uh, popular. It, it, it just makes you feel like a man. It's mm-hmm. just going back to like surviving in the woods, lone wolfing it, and, yep. and it's things that you can teach your kids when you're camping too, which is pretty awesome. Yeah. I learned to feather a piece of wood real good. Did you? Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Um, the other guide I really like too, the survival handbook, I actually got this in, I can't remember, it was like a bundle of all these different, I have them all in ebooks. Um, the SAS Survival Handbook. Yeah, this one's also, ri- this is probably the most popular survival guide yeah this one's uh got a lot of deep detail you got you know it talks about food and first Mm -hmm. aid disaster survival self-defense security climate and terrain how to deal with uh the changes there and uh just overall being prepared understand the basics of survival reading uh weather and uh it's one of the yeah like you said it's like kind of one of the ultimate survival guides Mm -hmm. that you can get like covers nearly everything um I, I also had a subscription for several years of American Survival Guide. It's a magazine. But oh, the okay. thing I liked about it is it, it talks about different scenarios like victory gardens. And then it mm. talks about, uh, uh, you know, uh, grid down scenario. So it kind of is like a, like a brief little uh, snippet of different scenarios and talks about the different gear and, and things that you can have. So, I mean... It's not a book. It's more of like a magazine subscription, but I found it super useful. Nice. And I, I, I've referred back to those. A lot of like some of our ideas have come out of these too. So mm-hmm. uh, just topics, ideas. Um, Casual Prepper Beginner's Guide to the Apocalypse. Yeah, you know? which, which isn't even available anymore. Isn't it? No. It, I thought it, it was. Take, I thought no. I found it on there. Uh, well, I, I think it's actually off of there now. Well, never mind. Look. You it, lost it, your chance. I know. I mean, we can put it back. We're going to put the it back up at some point. The other reason I threw it in there is it's like, it's got just a little summary of a bunch of, you know, yeah. the uh, different scenarios and different things to think about. Just kind of get your mind going. Easy to read. It is. Yeah. It's, it's, that's the nice thing. It's super easy to read. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, maybe something to introduce people into prepping yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, from Battle Box, we've received the Outdoor Life, yeah. like Emergency Survival Manual. I, these books they're are cool. awesome. Yeah. Like they got pictures for one. Yeah, they they're pretty pictures. They're nice. Yeah, they're really well made. But they're like books. a nice collectible, um, and they have so many different ones. There's like a whole series of different uh, topics that they talk about. Um, yeah, we probably got two or there's three. There's a bushcraft. From, there's from a wilderness Box. survival. Yeah, how to survive? How to survive off the grid? But they're they're just put together super well. They're I like really, the weather one. I have the, that's the weather one. manual. So yeah. cool. Uh, the extreme weather yes. survival manual. Yeah, because that's, cool. that's m- most likely the stuff that we're going to run into at yep. different parts of our life. And mm-hmm. it talks about how to build shelter, how to stay warm, how to like hunker down in your in your home. What if you're in a uh, you're out and about and you're stranded in your vehicle? Like it has all that stuff in there. It has this one, that one in particular is 214 tips for surviving nature's worst. Yeah. But great manuals. You can get them on, um, you can get them on Amazon and the digital ones are pretty cheap and you can get them in a bundle and stuff like yeah. that. But I, I, I highly recommend checking those out. Mm. Um, one of the other books that I, uh, that I don't know. Yeah. I don't know why I didn't have it in here. Kobe threw it in here because, um, I actually have this one too. Uh, the hundred deadly seals. Mm-hmm. This one came with that little bundle that I had. Oh, did it? Nice. So this one, uh, it's a hands-on practical survival guide from retired Navy SEAL Clint Emerson. Yeah, good dude, dude. knows. Yeah, what he's talking about. He's legit. And yeah. these guys have trained like no other. You know, so mm-hmm. they've uh to teach you how to uh kind of deal with not only just people but scenarios. Uh, how to stay safe. Talks a lot about um gray man and protecting mm-hmm. yourself. Um, I like it because it's like quick little snippets. You can kind of just pick that's what it up I like to and read it's great for ADD mind like mine. Yeah. You can just read a little section here and there when you're yeah. bored. You know? This one I know I've skimmed through. I, I need to just read it through. It's kind of one of those weird ones of like reading a book. Cause mm-hmm. it's like you said, it has those little snippets. Yeah. So it's not like you just read all the way through. Yeah. It's essential 
to like have in your library. Yeah. Because you can like go over these things and these training. And he has a that whole, he's learned. He has a whole I know he has a whole, a whole bunch, bunch of them. too. There's like five or six different in that whole series. So that yeah. one's a great one to have. Mm -hmm. Um another one that I would add into like your little uh, survival library. And then um filled and stream, those are these are a few that we've gotten from Battlebox as well. Mm. The Total Outdoorsman yep. uh, Skills and Tools Manual. There's ones that talk about like marksmen. They, they're they're just they're also they're kind of like the outdoor life ones. They're just put together really well, kind of to the point, easy to read, and you know they have little guides in them and stuff like that. So, I uh, as for books and magazines, those are kind of the ones that I would look at first because mm -hmm. they're easy to add to your library to get to eventually. Sure, and, you know if you're. <laughs> If you're hunkered down, you're in a scenario, we go to another pandemic like we did. Yeah. You're sitting in your house, uh, having these already available. Yeah. It's a perfect time to start busting through them. So. A couple more I would suggest that I think are really, really good. One is the Prepper's uh, Water Survival Guide. That's because, the one we got from BattleBox. Yeah, huh? we got that one from, but it is great. Again, it's like trying to remember all those little things about water is tough. And this one, you just put it on your shelf and you got the reference right there. Yeah. The other one is the nuclear war survival skills is kind of cool. Yeah. And it's one that was written a long time ago, but has some great information. If we ever get into nuclear That's an war. Old sucker, huh? Has yeah. the coolest looking cover because it just looks like red it's, and yellow. you work at the nuclear plant. Here yep. you go. It's like a manual. So anyways, those two are kind of cool. There was one other well. that I didn't mention too, um, that I thought about later was the, I can't, do you remember that it's the edible plants? Like, mm botanist guide or whatever yeah. that one i found pretty cool just because you never know like yeah for sure happen to like yeah. root around out there literally yeah um, there's you'll so want many. something that teaches you a lot of those those ones i talked about they have that in there mm -hmm. they have like edible plants and things to look for but having one specifically i even have some cards yep that like tell you what mm -hmm. plants are edible and what ones can dye your leather yeah you don't want like that. that. <laughs> yeah it's cool so. yeah nice okay so let's move on to prepper fiction books um, so I'm going to go over some that I've read and then some that I haven't, but, um, just know that I, I'm going to preface this with, I don't necessarily love the prepper fiction books that are written by preppers specifically for preppers because they're so damn cheesy. Yeah. Usually they don't know how to write a book. Really? Like it's bad. Like there's, <laughs> there's so much horrible prepper fiction out there that you have to be careful. Um, that. so I usually tend to go towards more like literary type books that have a survival type theme in them. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. What I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like real authors that know how to write, but they've, they've written this. Yeah. Okay. So let's start with ones I've read and we're going to start with one, totally see that, yeah. with one second after obviously, uh, William R. For Forskin. <laughs> That's why I always, <laughs> always say Forskin. Forskin. Um, it, it, this was written in 2009. I gave it four stars. If you don't know this book, you, you probably haven't listened very long because it's a really, really popular prepper book. Um, it's a story which one man struggles to save his family and his small North Carolina town after America loses a war in one second. A war that will send America back to the Dark Ages. A war based on a weapon, an EMP. So anyways, an EMP goes off. He has to deal with the aftermath of what that is. This is a classic. This is like that prepper entry novel type thing that people always talk. It's like the most talked about book in the prepper sphere, pretty much. Okay. I can't think of one that's talked more <laughs> about than that. Right now. Yeah. Go get it. Get it done. Uh, this one, this is a classic uh, disaster novel. It's called Lucifer's Hammer. It was written by Larry oh, yeah. Niven and Jerry Purnell. This was in 1977. I gave this thing five stars. Holy crap, was this a good book. Like, I want to read it again, but the thing's like 700 pages, and so <laughs> I, I can't make myself do it. So the premise is, a giant comet has slammed into Earth, forging earthquakes a thousand times too powerful to measure on the Richter scale, tidal, tidal waves thousands of feet high. Cities are turned into oceans. Oceans turned into steam. Um, it, it, it was the beginning of a new ice age and the end of civilization. But this thing has it all. What I love about this book is that it gives you before the disaster, it gives you during the disaster, and it gives you post-disaster. Most books that preppers love are post-apocalyptic. Yeah. You know what I mean? Most movies are the yeah, same way. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, but I just, I like I like to have all of the, I like to have before, during, and after. And this one gives you everything. Just know that this thing was written in the 70s. Um, so you, you just have to know that. But it is like pure prepper porn for me um i love disaster books this one might be my favorite nice lucifer's hammer i guess that's why like 
what was the one that the one second after and then the mm-hmm. second I, yeah it's one year I, after i like yeah. the, i like the Mm-hmm. The, the events before yep. and during yep. probably more so when I do you eliminate too. those I kind of get a little bored I do too it's, it always devolves into like kind people are killing too. everybody and like whatever yeah. you know what I mean like I, I want to see I know that's what it feels like that's why season one of The Walking Dead was by far the best it was you got like as the disaster was happening you got a little bit before yeah so much yeah better. that one was amazing next one I want to talk about is The Last Babylon uh, by Pat Frank this was uh, written in 1959 I give this five stars as well The Richest Man in Babylon. Yeah, Pat Frank. <laughs> um, this what this is uh, classic. This is one of the ones that everybody goes back to. One of the the early um, apocalyptic type novels. Um, so this is basically. Um, it says, the last Babylon, those fateful words heralded the end when the unthinkable nightmare of nuclear holocaust ravaged the United States. It was instant death for tens of millions of people. For survivor, survivors, it was a nightmare of hunger, sickness, and brutality. Overnight, a thousand years of civilization were stripped away. But for one f- small Florida town, miraculously spared against all odds, the struggle was only just beginning. Um, so... This one, again, written in the glory days of like the atomic 50s, you know, um, but I, I really, really enjoyed this one. If you like uh, nuclear war type novels um, and especially ones written, you know, mid-century, this one is great. It's one of the best, probably. Um, next, we're going to move on to World War Z uh, by Max Brooks, written in 2006. I, again, I gave this five stars. Um, yeah, I like that book. If, uh, if you're judging whether One you of the should, few fictions I've read. Yeah. if you're judging whether you should read this based on the movie just throw that out yeah they're not they're not even like, close to the same bits and pieces but yeah. yeah like you said what did the what did the author yeah, say max brooks said like they they bought a really nice the so title. true i it's never just heard the title. Say, i never heard that but that yeah. makes that's exactly what it is so the novel is uh framed around a series of interviews conducted by a fictionalized version of max brooks the author of the zombie survival guide known in the universe as the civilian survival guide he travels around the world um a decade after the end of what most is com- commonly referred to as the zombie war so it's it's written in a really cool form where it's interviews and him talking about how he's going on. It's it's just, it's really great. So World War Z is fantastic. I think Cam's updating his Facebook over there. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> no, I was looking at, <laughs> not tight. is that making noise? No, I just, I could just see you just like scrolling. <laughs> oh no, I was looking at some different books. <laughs> yeah. Um, the next one I want to talk about is called Tomorrow um, by Philip Wiley. This one was written in 1954. <laughs> Updating my Facebook. <laughs> Signing in, to, I don't even have Facebook. Um, Britain in 1954, I gave it four stars. Um, if you love like height of Cold War era civil defense uh, type stories, this thing is like dead on exactly what you should be looking for. <laughs> this thing is so freaking good. The only thing is like the first half of the book almost feels like a like a 1950s soap opera <laughs> type thing. Uh, and I really didn't hate it. It actually was pretty good. The second half is like a... This br- is tomorrow? Yeah. It's a brutal telling of an atomic bomb attack on the US. Like it is a brutal what it shows you. But the, the crux of the story is there's two towns. One of them has a really good civil defense um, program one has zero civil defense and like the difference of how they get through this is really interesting so it's called tomorrow so if you if you're interested in civil defense stuff it's great you're gonna love it um the next one this was a classic the stand by stephen king written in 1978 hmm. I, I gave it four stars what was that one huh? tell me about it nah, yeah um so it's it's about uh plague um, basically an apocalyptic plague that just wipes out most of the world. Oh, um, which is, I don't know if I can handle one of those. <laughs> yeah. And I love, I love those stories. Yeah. I, I love that kind of stuff. This thing is long. It's like 1200 pages. Jeez. Like it takes you three months just to read it. Me, it's, I, I read it in like, years. I read it in three weeks. I actually had the shorter version. There's a version that's like 900 and something pages. That's the version I read. Um, so freaking long. Some of the sections in this book are absolutely magnificent. Like, just blow you away. So good. The ending is a letdown. Classic Stephen King. <laughs> Always letting you down in the he end, really unfortunately. But but it really, it's a great mix of pandemic apocalypse, but it adds in, like, some supernatural elements. Obviously, you kind of have to expect that with Stephen King, but really great. As a prepper, obviously, the pandemic apocalypse part really speaks to me. So, anyways... Um, Earth Abides. This is a, this is by George R. Stewart written in 1949. I gave it three stars. This one is 
usually talked about as one of probably the first apocalyptic type novel. Um, it's kind of the classic. The first half of this book was great, but I slogged through the middle third and, and finished it. Um, but there's some really cool stuff in there. If you like, um, you know, the world getting wiped out and somebody trying to survive and rebuilding civilization. That's what it talks about. Uh, That's next, cool stuff. Yeah, it's great. Um, the next one is called Moon of the Crusted Snow. Um, Wabashug Rice wrote this in 2018, so it's relatively new. It's four stars. I gave it. Anyways, it's kind of an interesting uh, premise. So it says, with winter looming, a small northern Anishabi community goes dark. So that's a um, an Indian tribe. Uh, Native Americans cut off people become passive and confused panic builds as the food supply dwindles while the band uh, council and pocket of a community member struggle to maintain order An unexpected visitor arrives. So anyways, it's like there's nothing like really spectacular here as far as like new storytelling, but it's a great like loss of power story. The community struggles to survive. They get through. So it's kind of interesting. Um, another one that I read was the called... The winter ones are always kind of interesting to me. Yeah, because it just adds another element. Rough. Yeah, another element of trying to get through it. But this one, again, was a different angle where it's a, a, a Native American tribe trying to go through it, but like modern times, it's interesting. Uh, the End of the World mm. Running Club by Adrian J. Walker. I gave it three stars. This is a like a post-apocalyptic asteroid uh, hits the Earth novel. He gets separated from his family. He's got to run for like two weeks to make it to him on time. Um, I read it years ago. I remember the beginning was great as the asteroids hit, but then it just got kind of okay. So <laughs> it's one to look at, though, if you're interested in that. Uh, Black Autumn. This is written by Jeff Kirkham and Jason Ross. And if you know the je- name Jeff Kirkham, you, you, if you listen to us, you might. Uh, he owns uh, Ready Man um, down in Salt Lake. You know, they do all the lot of, lot of different gear, a lot of different, like, um, education stuff for survival. So, anyways, I gave it three and a half stars. It's basically about... Um, it's set in uh, Salt Lake City. Huh? Yeah, it's set in Salt Lake City. <clears throat> but it leans really heavily on, like, military... Um, guns, you know, that sort of stuff. But it was actually wasn't that bad. So if you want to check that out, it's called <laughs> Black Autumn. It actually came in a battle box. Did it? Yeah. So you I was probably, say, I remember you probably the name, but it. I just don't remember. <laughs> yeah, you probably have it somewhere at the house. Stashed away. Or you've already used it to wipe your butt with. Who knows? <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> who knows? Yeah. Maybe. Uh, the next one I I'll talk about. a fictional stack that's still been untouched. Yeah. Uh, Devolution. This one, again, is by Max Brooks. He hmm. wrote World War Z. I did like his, yeah. Um, it was written in 2020. I only gave it three stars. But not that good. Just- I really wanted to love it because the premise is just like, holy crap, so good. So, as the ash and chaos from Mount Rainier's eruption swirled and finally settled, the story of the Green Loop Massacre has passed unnoticed, unexamined until now. But the journalists, journals of resident Kate Holland Recovered from the town's bloody wreckage, capture a tale too harrowing and too earth-shattering in its implications to be forgotten. Basically, um, there is a uh, um, Mount Rainier erupts, right? And that and crazy stuff happens. And then there's a family of Bigfoot, Big Feet, Bigfoots, however you want to say it. <laughs> and they start attacking these people in this little community. So it's a really wow. cool premise. Um, I know it's weird, but, uh, uh, anyways, just didn't quite do it for me. Um, (laughs) anyways, uh, next one is on the beach. Again, this is one of those classic, uh, world war three, uh, nuclear Holocaust, um, novels. I didn't like it. I gave it two stars. I struggled with it. It was slow, um, boring. Yeah. But it's on the beach and it's a classic, so we have to talk about it. Um, no blade of grass is by John Christopher. I gave three stars. Really cool premise. A story about survivors from London struggling to survive after a terrible plague wipes out the grain supply. So, like, it's called the, the it's either called the death of grass or no blade of grass. Basically, all wheat just stops growing. That would be a, yeah, so pretty it's, devastating. It's kind of crazy, anyways. Um, the day the machine stopped by Christopher Anvil, nineteen sixty four. I gave it three and a half stars. Suddenly, all electricity stops working. Interesting, fun premise. So. Um, 64, huh? Yeah, it's an old oldie. Uh, Blizzard by David James, uh, 1975, gave it three stars. Town is ravaged by a snowstorm while simultaneously losing power and gas. So, obviously, right up our alley is Preppers, right? Um, okay, so now I'm going to move into some. I'm just going to give you a quick uh, reading of some titles of books you can look at. Look, again, I there's a ton of Prepper fiction out there. These, these ones are that, ones you have not read. I have not read these. You've been interested in. I have not read them. Um, 
but I, literally, literally, this could be a uh, hundred titles long. But I only took the most popular ones and or the ones that I've like seen that look interesting. Um, two two hundred ninety nine days by Glenn Tate. This is a ten book series um, about um, world without rule of law kind of thing. He's at his cabin. Anyways, kind of like the classic prepper type stuff. Equipping Modern Patriot series. This one's also by Jonathan Hollerman. Again, it's an e, a post-EMP world. And Cam's deleting before stuff. We've, no, before we even... I know, I actually... <laughs> what that, are you doing? For um, what? Before we even started the podcast, somebody gave me this book. So mm. I still have it. Oh, nice. Cool. Still have it. Still have it. I haven't it. cracked it open. Yeah. Yet. Farnham's Freehold by Heinlein. BB by Jonathan Hall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Life as We Knew It uh, series by Susan Pfeffer. This is more of like a YA one. It's an interesting premise, though. Um, the moon gets too close to Earth. Ooh, yeah. Yeah, I like that kind of stuff. And so stuff goes you're haywire. All, you want me to laugh at the moon? Or yeah. The, <laughs> what is that? Yeah. I can't remember. Um, yeah. What do I want, Mary? You want, you want me to lash on the moon? Lash on the moon, pull it down. <laughs> yeah. um, Out of the Ashes by William Johnstone. A nuclear holocaust destroys America. People are trying to rebuild. Uh, this one is probably the most popular one I've seen online. And I started the first book and I just didn't like it. The Survivalist series by Angry American. It's a 10 book series. Wow. Um, Morgan Carter must figure out how to get back to his family after his car breaks down 250 miles from home and the American power grid collapses. It's like written written um, by a prepper directly for preppers. Really? It's very preppery. Everything is prepper. Prepper, prepper, prepper <laughs> on that one. Um, yeah, some there, people might love that. Yeah, they will. A lot of people do love it. A lot of preppers love it. So you can check that out. The Road by Cormac McCarthy. Obviously, there is the film The Road. Uh, this is the book which it, it is uh, based on. So if you want to be depressed, go read it. It is, yeah. Um, I know... Uh the Art of Manliness podcast. Mm -hmm. He reads, he, it's like one of his favorite once, uh, that he reads once a year. And I'm oh, like, didn't wow. you say it was pretty, pretty depressing? I haven't read it. Oh, okay. Um, I just, I, I've I seen the movie. Yeah. And it's depressing. See, and I haven't seen the movie. I'm like, maybe I should read the book. I have the book. If you want to read it, I've yeah, got it on my shelf. I might, I, I, I'm interested just to see. Yeah. But the postman, too much. The Postman by David Brin. Um, we know this as the movie that Kevin Costner was in. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but it's it's a classic. In, How big in the is that genre. sucker? It's not that big. The movie's like five hours. Isn't no, it? it's really not. It's just a normal sized book. Um, Lights Out by Robert Crawford, a story about a man who finds himself away from home when the entire power, power grid goes down. Like it's the exact same premise as the other one. Yeah. Um, Footfall by Jerry Pornell. I put this one in there because he was part of the writing team for um, uh, Lucifer's <laughs> Hammer. Similar to elephants, though. Yeah, no, it's, I know. I, I like Sounds that kind of stuff. Aliens similar to elephants invade the earth. <laughs> <laughs> a good deal of how to survive in urban areas without infrastructure would, you know, would normally have. So it's interesting. I am legend, Richard Matheson, the basis for the Omega man in, in the movie, I am legend with Will Smith, which there's so a new Omega one. man. Wasn't, I thought that was the book name, no. but the book is, I am legend. I am legend. Oh, okay. Yeah. The first I'd movie. I didn't read that. The first so movie. Was the was second Omega movie man. on that. Yeah, I did. So yeah. are they going off from the alternate ending? Uh, I don't to think have so. Will Smith oh, come back. Yeah. Cause Will Smith is there. He got huh? blasted. I don't know. But if you watch the movie, there is an alternate mm -hmm. ending, which is better, which is actually what the book, mm -hmm. I think that follows the book more, is that yeah. he, um, that they, they get away, or he gets away with that. that yeah, thing. I don't know. That's interesting. I didn't think about that. So, I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Who knows? Last one is Day by Day Armageddon by J.L. Bourne. Um, an ongoing journal depicting one man's struggle for survival, dealing with the trials of an undead world of unfolding around him. Zombies. <laughs> Zombie book. <laughs> so anyways, that's a whole bunch of fiction books that you could get your hands on nice, yeah. and read. Yeah, I'm and sure some of them are good from there. Some of them suck. So <laughs> good luck. Some of them, who knows, huh? Yeah, some of them, who knows, yeah. Yeah. Well, um, the next part, um, I guess I, I was going to mention real quick, um, the most of the like survival ones, for some reason, for me, are like the seafaring ones and the oh, that's exploring, right, yeah. like the exploring the north pass and the south pass the only reason i like those and i like the endurance is amazing not because of the terrible scenario and and it's just like to see leadership and the difference it makes in mm -hmm. the brotherhood and like just how people come together so anyways those are ones like the endurance i liked in the heart of the sea mm -hmm. and I, like all those are, are pretty cool just to hear how they managed each like how like the captain managed the men mm -hmm. to kind of keep their morale up. That's something yeah. I always worry about. It's just like, 
man, I'm going to probably be one of those that's like, I'm done. <laughs> this all sucks. Sit down and die. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, so for kids and young adults, these are just some options. Uh, of First, I wanted to just mention some book uh, books that can kind of help them develop some survival skills and some prepper skills and stuff like that that maybe are a little bit funner and, and more appropriate for their age. Mm-hmm. So the I Survived series, have you seen those? It's like, I survived a volcano, yeah. I survived Titanic. My of- son reads them like crazy. He's read like, like 40 of them, I swear. I don't know how many there are, but... He likes them just because it kind of like paints the scenario and makes him think of like, he always talks to me a little bit about them and, and like, he's like, man, what would you do if this happened? It's just kind of exciting yeah. to kind of get him, uh, to, Thinking the, about it kind it. of puts him into that mindset of like, what if there was a disaster and I was faced with these decisions? The other thing that, that's out there is what to do if, uh, or sorry, is the, uh, um, animal dangers. No, where is it? Oh, I don't know. Um, I have, where did I put it? Oh, the oh my gosh Can i must have deleted it I'm, I'm good at doing that with this apparently no the ones where you have to actually choose your scenario like choose your oh. it's almost like a choose your own adventure yeah but it's survivor based that's can you survive right yeah, oh it is underneath there i didn't separate it out it looked like it was part of that same yeah. paragraph sorry about that <laughs> yeah can you survive um these are little scenarios that they can choose mm-hmm. and see what happens and some of them are real basic it's like a tiger's chasing you do you Throw yeah. a stick at it, or do you run the other way? But it, it teaches them like these little things on you know wilderness survival. If they were on their own and yeah. they face like a black bear or a brown bear, mm-hmm. it kind of teaches them those things. Um, we've gotten a couple of those, and he, he my, like my sons have read those and like them. Um, there is the ultimate survival guide for kids. It has like what to do for like animal dangers. It has mm. natural dangers, how to survive hurricanes, and what to do if you have to s- escape a car that's in the water, um, burning buildings, like stuff like that. So mm, that's much cool. more detailed, probably a little over the top, but um, like in turn, it just depends on your kid. Like yeah. mine might have a little more anxiety with this, but yeah. um, I think I think some of them. Like would love my, it. I think my oldest would probably love it. Yeah, he loves to like read about disasters, which is kind of disturbing. Maybe it's because of what we do. I don't know. I do too, so. Um, And then it it also goes into some basic stuff of like planning a trip, you know, Mm -hmm. taking a pen knife, finding food, making a shelter. So if he's not into scouts, because there's all kind of trouble with scouts nowadays, (laughs) then uh, these are uh, good books to kind of help him learn those skills. The other one is Survivor Kid. Um, This is a pretty cool book. It's, you know, it talks about if you get lost, like, when camping, it talks about like surviving out there in the wilderness, what to do, where to stay, and mm-hmm. and how to build shelters. It's kind of like Hatchet, yeah. which is uh, one Kobe added, and I don't know why I didn't because I read that when I was a kid, oh, and yeah. I even saw the movie, which is um, it's called The Call in the Wild, the but it's wild. actually about the book Hatchet. So he just has his little hatchet, plane goes down, he has to survive until someone finds him, picks him up, which is it's like little dream scenario oh, yeah, for a, a kid. kid. Man, was yeah. like, man, that'd be so Another awesome. one I loved as a kid was My Side of the Mountain. Did you oh, ever yeah. read that? I never did read it. I read it like five I, I, times. I, 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 yeah. I Jeez, loved it. talking to me about that book? It's such a good book, man. Um, My kids all read it too. They loved it. Really? My, yeah, they read, they loved it. I don't have to get that but one. That, and that one has a lot of like similar like survival stuff and they actually like, he draws pictures of how he made his his shelter and all in the yeah. and how he's cooking and all that oh, kind of yeah, stuff. Yeah, that would be freaking so, amazing for yeah, kids. Yep, yeah, my side of the mountain. Um what was the other one you mentioned is like the the scout book? Oh yeah, the scout handbook. Scout handbook. The Boy Scouts handbook. Yeah. It has all that stuff, tying knots mm-hmm. and um building forts and shelters and well not forts, but building shelter and things mm-hmm. like that. So, um any of those guides just to kind of like get them thinking if they're not involved with like youth programs that are teaching them those mm-hmm. skills and wilderness and they're not doing scouts or anything like that. These books are really useful and then just take them out there and get them camping. Yeah. I did throw in here uh just keep in mind that if you were in these scenarios and things were like, you know, a little tense and everybody's kind of stressed out. It's not a bad idea to build a little library, which we have of books that are just fun, easy yeah. to read, like ones that they can take their mind off things. Like my kids love the dog man series yeah. and the dire of wimpy kids. That's super like the easiest reading, but it's just generally, you know, it's kind of fun. Entertaining. Can, yeah. We just like here, read this when they're all kind of like hyped up at night. It's like, read this for a minute and go to bed. It's just something to just kind of 
yeah. bring things back down. Yeah. Um, Garfield, Far Side, any of those little comic things. I, I, I have those uh, for my kids. Like we have quite a few books for them just to kind of take their mind off of them. You don't have to always focus on the survival ones. So. Yeah, for sure. I, I agree. But man, that's, that's, it. that's a lot of books. Book, book, books. Get your books today. <laughs> yeah, read. I've got I've got a lot of like audio books, but there's so there's so many limitations to audio books. Yeah. It's like really nice to listen to mm-hmm. and, and convenient because yes. like driving and traveling, but I don't like that I can't make notes. I don't like that I can like that you can, but it's just not as convenient. But I lo- I like audio books, yeah, to a point. I just feel like depending on I probably listen to more because it of it because it's more convenient for yeah. me. But um, again, you're going to deal with power issue. You're mm-hmm. going to deal with when, you know, and also just the absorption of the information isn't as no, good. It's like you just like, I'm the worst listener, you just like so. space off and like all of a sudden you're home and like, Oh, I didn't listen to the last three I don't know chapters. how I got here. And I don't remember what I listened <laughs> yeah. to. It's like, I just ended up at home. Always happens to me. Yeah. Like I have a hard time. Pulling a picket fence behind you. Yeah. You're like, what the hell happened? <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, awesome. Today's podcast is brought to you by Tech Pack, the only monthly tactical subscription box with useful professional grade stuff inside. Use our code Casual Preppers. You're going to get a free $70 machine made part from Next Level Armament. That's a deal you can't beat with a friggin' stick. Heck no. Nah. So go to techpack.com and use that code. It's time for the quick and dirty medical tip. Uh, so I know I've talked about before getting splinting materials Mm -hmm. for sprains and breaks and things like that. Um, A lot of people, if they haven't had any of this happen, don't know there, there is a product that exists called ortho glass. So I just mentioned, and you can, you can buy that from Amazon. It's expensive on there. There's some other medical sites you can get it from. You don't have to have a license, but the nice thing about it is it's basically casting material that's already wrapped in gauze. Mm. So you just basically take it out of the package and, and it's, it comes in a big roll. Yeah. And so you just clip it and then you, um, you, you clip it off and then you close and, you know, close it cause any moisture and stuff's going to harden it. And then that you just soak in a little bit of water and then you just form it around, uh, whatever limb or joint you're trying to isolate and make sure you have some coban and some ACE bandage. So I know that, that sounds super basic, but that stuff is so useful mm-hmm. because you get like, the Sam splints are great, and I highly recommend those too, especially for like bug out bags. But but I mean, they're still malleable. They're still going to be mobile. They're not going to stiffen. They just give you a little bit of rigidity. Yeah, this is going to be like a cast that's not a full on cast. Mm. So that's an easy thing to buy. Get you a lot of coban and a lot of ace bandage for it as well. And the other thing that I would recommend is go to 3M's website, and you can get a splinting guide. And it's like you can either order one or just get just download it but it tells you all the different things it even tells you like the injury is with the humerus or it's an elbow fracture and whatever and it tells you exactly which oh, flint yeah. to, lo- to cool. use so it's, it's just kinda like nice. two pages super easy yeah so um it's it's a guide that i think would be really helpful when you can't access medical care yeah. so you have your splinting materials and if you don't know you're like i don't know if this is broken or not you splint it and you know yeah. it's as easy as that and that guide the 3m splinting guide is super helpful so nice that's the basic little splint guide instruction that i wanted to give you i like info that on, so. noise i like that <laughs> all right <laughs> well thanks for listening guys we appreciate you make sure you're uh subscribed and make sure you've sent us to your friends man that's yes you, please please just send us over to a buddy keep us growing so yeah. we don't have to go back to work yeah, one day <laughs> exactly <laughs> uh thanks guys stay survived